Force training, non-force training. The problem is human beings are good at an extreme. In this extreme situation, the non-force trainers believe that, similar to where they raise their children, never insist and never enforce. So never make your child unhappy. If you say brush your teeth and do your homework, don't run in, in the parking lot, we have rules, they'll constantly repeat themselves. But if the child's really become unhappy, they sit down with the child and try to negotiate, and the child just negotiates back, and nothing ever is reliable with the child. And they're constantly telling their child, please don't do it. So they don't teach their children life skills, and they're not going to teach their dogs life skills. Non-force trainers believe never make your dog unhappy. They have pictures all over the internet of what unhappy dogs look like. Their ears are back, their tail's down, and then they believe that they're destroying their dog psychologically. So when you tell your child to do their homework again and again and clean their room, that they're crying and upset and they're tired and they don't want to do it, that, that's child abuse. Then we have the other extreme on the other end of force trainers that are kind of on this basic Pavlonian theory of you can either shock collar them or you can just yank a cha choke chain and a prong collar as many times as you want and just base it on pain. And they don't use any type of positive reinforcement. And when the dog does something correct, they just don't inflict pain. When they do something incorrect, they inflict pain. And a lot of it is done out of hostility and the energy of the handler is hostile. So we have two extremes. The problem is, is the ignorance in the world. They don't look at the fact that there is another alternative. You can use force, but you use dog force on a reasonable scale. Just as if I'm going to grab my child from running into the street, I have no choice. I have to grab them firmly on the leg or the arm and prevent them from running out. Also, you have to understand that force at some times for a predator, a dog, is at a different level and degree as they perceive to be of that play rugby, mixed martial arts sports, or even figure skating, and you fall on hard on the ice. This is not abuse. These people love their sport and they continue to play their sport. It's very hypocritical, as I will demonstrate in my films, how dogs play naturally without human interference. The dogs didn't ask your opinion. The universe was created without it, and the dogs are gonna play at their level of comfort. And in their level of comfort, they use this great force, they'll run 35 miles an hour and collide into each other, and their teeth clanking, and they're rolling around, and they're, in, they're like judo practitioners and rugby and mixed martial arts all together, knocking each other off balance using their teeth. Believe me, that's a lot of impact. And I believe we all know out there the difference between a kick and a bump. I can bump you walking through the grocery store. I can bump you playing basketball, reaching up for the goal. Bumping is a normal part of life. So for the extremists out there that are probably self-medicated, manipulate a dog and I move a dog around in circles and I'm bumping them, I'm actually using less force than my two dogs would use during their own play. And I don't promote shock collars because Electrocution is not something that's changing behavior. They understand body language. And yes, humans can duplicate minimal amounts of dog body language and be very effective in the dog training in combination with our voices. We are already superior and erect and tall. If you're one of these people that believe that the universe is all equal, I will reply, you should just page Karl Marx. Equality doesn't exist. There's different levels of intelligence, different levels of thresholds of what dogs' pain thresholds are depending on their breed, how fast they run, their ability to jump, their ability to process thoughts, and same with human beings. So if you believe that dogs are equal and you want to treat them as a roommate, you're better off never hiring a dog trainer. And what the extremists on the non-force level are preaching is basically a dog cannot be reliable. So a dog off leash can never be reliable. They must micromanage the animal, hand feed them constantly, and everyone must participate in this. And if they're not willing to participate in micromanagement of the dog, then they have to tie the dog to themselves or tie the dog to a post or put the dog away, which is what I call avoidance. This is not dog. If I, as an employer, have to stand over an employee and micromanage them all day, then they're not trained. And then unfortunately, these extremists have raised their children this way, they run their households, and the child gets on an airplane flight and dominates and screams and yells. They go to school and control the classroom, threaten lawsuits, and then they get a job and tell their boss what to do. So it's a great way to look at our sociology through dog training. What we're doing to our animals and what's being preached on the market is also what we've done to ourselves. And we're not very good at it. You cannot argue with success. None of my clients' dogs fear me, they love me and they lick me. 
the dogs are happy to visit me and play with me and play rough and they know that I'm just playing. They also respond immediately off leash and this has to be looked at as success and all they can try to do is say on the extremist side is that I'm using fear to motivate the dog which is absolutely untrue because they don't know me personally and they haven't worked with me. They don't understand that none of this is based on fear. It's the contrary. It's all based on love. The dogs won't stop licking me and playing with me as you'll see in some of my TV shows and also with my videos. Positive reinforcement only without balance of enforcement and boundaries and the boundaries have to be on a level that meets the challenge. So in other words, every dog has a different personality. Some dogs don't require any physical force. Some dogs require physical force that is reasonable in what I would be determined to be humane because I am duplicating it, a reasonable force that dogs do with amongst one another in play. And they're, in their play, they'll use force and sometimes it's not play to push another dog to the edge to say, hey, I'm the boss. Human beings are no different. We've done this through the military. You don't tell the general what to do on the battlefield. You will go to military prison. You don't tell the police officer you don't agree with him and just tell him to leave you alone. And you don't tell your boss what to do without consequences of losing your job. So why is it that the police and military dogs and seeing eye dogs are not following the Scooby Snack method of being handed treats because it's simply not reliable off leash. So this whole subject, it really comes down to money. The non-forest trainers are trying to make people feel guilty because strong-willed dogs are the best working dogs. We know that as dog trainers. And strong-willed dogs require strong-willed handlers to determine where the boundaries are. Again, keeping the needle in the middle between emotion and logic, the enforcement, is a healthy mind. If I'm all emotion and the enforcement is simply a timeout into a crate or taking their toy away or avoidance and moving them out of the room or tying them up, that's not going to change a strong-willed dog and this is not proven to be effective. Until somebody can come out with videos that are uncut, unedited, of highly aggressive dogs or high anxiety dogs or very just strong-willed working dogs and show us off-leash what they'll do with confusion with other animals, then they're nothing but working that. I keep the needle in the middle and it's the positive reinforcement with the logic of enforcement. My videos prove it. Discussing hand feeding techniques from the positive reinforcement only training that claim they're so modern, they're simply white papers, articles that they say that they scientifically can prove is what I constantly hear. I have not seen them prove it. If they could prove it, I'd have to see it in my own eyes. They're selling a training program based on simply I have to have a treat in my hand and I have to have a clicker. I don't know. That's not reliability. That's micromanagement and avoidance.